All right, guys, welcome back to another lockdown video. Now, in this video, what I want to look at is how you can carry out product research during lockdown. What I've done, I've come up with a way of solving the three biggest obstacles to carrying out product research at the moment. So in this video, I'm going to share with you my proposed solutions for those issues. And also, I'm going to share with you some details about a new business model that I'm starting. And hopefully that you guys will find it super helpful because it's really, really good for those of you that have a small capital investment or want something that you can get up and running a lot quicker than a traditional Amazon FBA business, which can take three or four months. The business model that I'm looking at, you could potentially be up and running within a week or two. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video to find out about what I have lined up for my new business. So in my view, there are currently three big obstacles to successful Amazon FBA product research at the moment. The first one is demand. We don't know when we look at the sales estimate of a niche, whether the demand figures that we are seeing are accurate. So I've got a solution for that. Uh, the second thing is the price. We don't know if the price has been bumped because the niche is doing really well. So there's so much demand, all of the sellers have increased their price. Or maybe the niche isn't doing very well and all of the sellers have dropped their price. So we don't know if the price point is accurate. And then finally, we don't know if all of the competition is visible. Now, the last thing that you want to do is find a niche that looks super attractive at the moment, only to find out that some of the best sellers are currently out of stock. And by the time you join the market, all these best sellers are back in stock and you really, really struggle to get any traction. So we need to overcome those three obstacles and that's what I hope to explain to you in this video how I am currently doing my Amazon FBA product research. So the first obstacle that I want to look at and that is being able to see all of the competition. Now this one is quite a quick fix, doesn't cost a penny and it's really, really simple to do. So if you just search for the niche that you're looking at, so if we go back to the classic chopping board niche which I use in many of my videos. So once you have searched for a particular product, you'll get a list of products that are currently in stock. Now what we need to do is see the out of stock products as well. Because like I say, there could be some really high quality competition that you're not aware of and you need to be aware of them that they are there. So the best way to see them is on the left hand side is to select a category first. Now I'd recommend choosing the most relevant highest level category because if I start picking the subcategories, that will restrict some of these listings. So I wanna keep as many of these listings visible as possible whilst including the new out of stock products as well. So I'm just gonna choose the home and kitchen category in this example. So as that's quite a top level category, that should keep pretty much all of the chopping boards visible. The next thing I want you to do is scroll down to the very bottom on the left hand side, and you'll now see this new filter called include out of stock. And if you tick that box, that will then start to include all of the listings that are inactive or out of stock and allow you to see the full competition within the niche. So that's one of the obstacles solved, that is being able to see all of the competitors within a particular niche. The next thing that I want to look at is how well these products are actually selling and how what they're selling at now compares to what you may expect in the future. So I'm gonna use X-Ray from Helium 10 in this example. Now if you saw my video last week, you know there's currently a massive 80% discount code available for this, which I'll pin at the top comment in the comment section. And also I'll probably bring up at the end of this video as well. So what I want to do is I want to show you how you can use X-Ray from Helium 10 to see what sales are like throughout the year and not just at the moment. So regardless of what the sales are at the moment, we want to know what they have been and what we can expect going forward when things hopefully get back to some sort of normality. So if we take the first product in the list and if we click on this little sales graph here, what this will do is show you the sales history for the product. Now the first thing I want you to do is going to put that on the one year time scale. So we can see sales over the last year. And at the moment, what we're seeing looks pretty representative of what we've seen over the past year. So that's a good, that's a positive sign. Now, if you saw a massive peak at the moment or a massive drop off, it will become clear quite quickly whether the sales you're seeing at the moment are indicative as to what you can expect going forward and as to what's happened in the past. So this first example is quite a solid start. So if we click on to the next one and pop that to the one year view as well, um, now we can see this has really picked up. Now this might just be this product performing well over the year. However, you can see here, since mid-March when lockdown really began, there has been a decent spike. So this maybe suggests that the sales in the niche are maybe up a little bit because of what's happening. And if you think about it, chopping boards with the amount of people that are preparing food at home at the moment, you know, with the takeaway shut and a lot of restaurants closed, there could be an increase in demand for chopping boards. So maybe this is the one that is more indicative as to what is happening. Let's try a couple more which have some reasonable sales. So this one here, which is currently estimated to be selling 245 units per month. If we go to the one year view, we can see again, as we've hit March, there has definitely been a substantial increase in demand. So two of the three products are showing quite a big increase in demand. And I think the first one did show a bit of a pickup in March. Let's just go back to that. There was a bit of a pickup there. It was just because it was a similar size peak to what we've seen previously, it didn't necessarily jump out. So let's take another one. This is saying 228. 
and we'll go to the one year view. And again, we see a noticeable pickup in March. Now these lines are quite squashed down because we've got some massive peaks here from last summer. But if you look at these, between kind of January and March, it was maybe selling a few units per day. Then as we got into April, it looks like they're out of stock there, but as they come back into stock, there's been quite a bump in April. So, you know, of the four products, all four of them are showing some sort of increase in March and April. So I would conclude that the sales figures that we're seeing at the moment are possibly a little overinflated to what you might expect in the long term. So that's how I would carry out product research with regards to sales at the moment. Now, are those figures accurate? Well, if you've been following my videos recently, you will know my products have been hit really hard. And these are the sales history charts for a couple of my products. So you can see here from March when the lockdown kicked in and the delivery dates got extended, my sales fell through the floor. And that happens for the both of the examples I've got here. So it's a pretty good representation. I'd say it's fairly accurate. Even these troughs here are when my products were out of stock. So I've picked up all of those. So I would say it's fairly reliable that you can look at these graphs to get a good idea of what you would expect these products to be selling going forward rather than relying on the estimated sales you are seeing at the moment. So I hope you guys can use this technique to be able to carry out product research at the moment rather than having to wait a good couple of months before things settle back down to get some up-to-date sales figures. And the final obstacle that we need to overcome and that is whether the price is accurate and can be relied on. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna scroll down and pick a random product. Actually, this could be a good example because these are some of the products that are out of stock and we've just brought back in. So we can see how these products react to the graphs I want to show you. So if we click on this one here, so the Dalton's Living Index Chopping Board set, which is currently unavailable. And what Helium 10 will do is add this nice little graph for you to see BSR history and also price history. So we can see that the BSR has shot up here probably since it went out of stock around the 19th of April. Um, and the blue line there shows the price. So this product was selling consistently at its price for the entire time that it was in stock. And then we can see that it went out of stock. However, if you're in a niche where lots of products have been bumping the price, you would see this blue line go up. What I'll do is I'll go back. Let me just click on a couple of the products that are still in stock because they're probably more likely to be bumping price. Uh, let's open these two. I'll open both of these together. Um, so that's the first one, the flexible chopping boards. Let's see what the graph shows for this product. Um, so, yeah, so here we go, we can see here, they were at nine pound um, early in, actually this takes to 90 days, makes it a bit further back. So they were very, very low at one point in January at 6.49. But you can see here from the middle of March, again, when lockdown really kicked in, they bumped their price all the way from nine pound and they're currently up to 11.99. So they've increased their price quite a bit in percentage terms. So let's take a look at this other example, which is the Vicloon cutting board set. Um, and we can see here again, someone that's bumped their price. So we're at 11.99 and they're now at 13.99. So my overall conclusion from looking at this niche quite quickly as part of this video is that one, the sales are possibly overinflated from what we're seeing from the middle of March onwards. And also probably the price point overall is slightly inflated as well. As some of these products are inflating the price because demand is so high. So by using those three methods, hopefully you can carry out accurate product research at the moment. You know, you can find out what the sales actually should be like. You can see what the price point is genuinely like and whether it's been bumped recently. And you can also include all of the products that are out of stock to see whether there's any competitors that you need to be aware of. And you can even look at the sales history of those out of stock competitors as well. Now for two of those bits, you do need Helium 10. And like I said, there is an 80% discount code available at the moment. I can see this only being available until the end of April. And if you're serious about carrying out product research at the moment, I would highly recommend it. As in my eyes, it is the best way to do product research at the moment when sales are all over the place. Now, if you are interested in signing up, all you need to do is go to tinyurl.com Darren80 and follow that through or just go directly to helium10.com and use the discount code Darren80. Now of 80% off that will cost you for the month $19.40 which is about £15. So if you want to do some product research over the next few weeks while you're in lockdown use that discount code you'll be able to do product research that other people won't be able to do and put yourself in a good position to start your Amazon FBA business. Now at the beginning of this video I mentioned a new business that I'm going to be starting that may be of interest to you guys that don't have a huge capital investment that Amazon FBA requires or don't want to wait two, three or four months to start an Amazon FBA business. So what I'm going to be doing on Monday, I'm going to be releasing the first video on my other YouTube channel 
documenting my journey of starting a print-on-demand business. Now, the print-on-demand business appeals to me for a number of reasons, and I'll be going over more of those reasons in that video. But for those of you that want to get a head start, if you do some research onto print-on-demand in the UK, and then when that video is released, what I'll be talking about should make a lot more sense. But this business model, I believe, is still viable in 2020. I've been doing research this week of all the samples, and I'll be explaining all of that in the video. And I will be documenting my entire journey from day one, just like I did with my Amazon FBA journey and how I grew that business from nothing to £20,000 of sale per month and I hope to do the same with the print on demand business so make sure you subscribe to honestmoney.co.uk I've also got a few videos up now so if you want some ideas for different ways to make money online or how to pay yourself as a director of a limited company or maybe you're interested in car leasing or trading forex there's a few videos there but on Monday or Tuesday depending on how long that video takes to produce I will be releasing the first video covering my print on demand journey which I hopefully you guys will find helpful so hopefully you found this video useful if you did I'd really appreciate if you could hit that like button you know hopefully I've shown you guys how you can still carry out Amazon FBA product research at the moment in a good reliable way um, and if you're not already subscribed please subscribe to both channels and I'll see you guys in the next videos